spending, we are spending our time celebrating and commemorating our personal, individual, and spiritual growth and expansion by looking at where we have been, where we are now, and where we are going. And we are calling this <coughs> theme for the whole month, Bridge Across Time. <laughs> and so last Sunday's talk uh, was inspired by the uh, Sufi poet Hafiz, but I want to thank our four candles, two of which who are here today. <laughs> who were, if you weren't here last week, you missed the skit. We had four candles in the closet. They were people representing candles. It was very cool and very a lot of fun. So we have Ken Candle here, and we have Denny Candle. Thank you, guys, for being the part of the light of this community. So Hafitz said, I wished I wished I could show you when you are lonely or in darkness, the astonishing light of your own being. So beautiful. And we had an inspiring time with it last week. And so today we're going to build upon that by realizing that to fully shine our astonishing lights into manifestation of our highest visions and our greatest dreams, we must live from the only place we can, which is in this now moment. There is no other time to live it. Now that may sound a little bit contradictory to what I just said about being in the past and being in the future, where we're looking at it, where we are, where we've been, where we're going to. And now I say we must live in the now moment. Which is it? It's both. How can it be both? I'm glad that you asked that. <laughs> when we look at where we have been, acknowledge it, accept it, shine the astonishing light of our own being on those places that seemed dark through forgiveness, acceptance, and release, and even honor where we have been. The contrast of where we have been has brought us to this now moment where we can realize that we truly are light beings. No matter what takes place, we are light beings. When we set our sights, our intentions, our vibrations, and our energy on expansion and expanded experiences in the future. And when we do those two things, and then we come into the present moment awareness and choose to live full, full out, right here, right now, living full out. Don't you love that? Living full out. Are you living full out in the here and now? Sometimes it's more challenging than others, but we have astonishing lights that live full out. Sometimes they might seem dim a little, but we have the ability to, to manifest dreams, desires, hopes for our lives and to bring them into manifestation. And we magnify our power to create a joy-filled life currently as well as in the future because we have the excitement, we have the joy of, of that vibration when we look to the future, we make our plans, we dream, we imagine in the now moment and it's a high vibration. It's a high vibration for the future, and it's a high vibration in the now moment. And so when we set our sights, our intentions, and our vibrations on that expansion, we are really living fully in the now moment. This moment right here, right now. And I love, I love this note from the universe. As you know, we get, uh, I get them, and I know a lot of you have, T-U-T, notes of um, Tom Dooley, Mike Dooley. I think Tom Dooley was a song, wasn't it? <laughs> no, my mind is a scary place. But anyway, this is, uh, the, you can get these every day on the, um, on the internet, so it's really cool. <laughs> notes from the universe. He says, did you know that the single most effective piece advice ever given to anyone 
who wanted a life partner is the exact same single most effective piece of advice ever given to anyone who wanted to live in prosperity, which also happens to be the single most effective, effective piece of advice ever given to anyone who wished to discover their life's purpose, foster peace on earth, improve health, it's all the same thing. What could it possibly be? Anyone know? Be happy in the here and now. It's so difficult, isn't it? But we truly make it very, I mean, because the mind, the thoughts are fully always running. They don't stop. So we have all these scenarios playing out. And where are they playing out? They're not playing out in the past. They're not playing out in the future. They're playing out in this now moment. So when they start to play out, just take a breath and bring, bring ourselves, I think of the Pharaoh Williams song, be happy. Just, just go into that place of knowing that you are a light of the divine. And that light cannot be extinguished. Cannot. Be happy now in the present moment. As you make the plans for the future, as you set your intentions, you are feeling that excitement, the high vibration. Don't think, don't think about the future with worry. Start using that wonderful faculty of imagination and let your imagination take over and start imagining great things for your future. Just imagine them and then act as if they are already taking place. Every great writer and thinker has had that same wisdom, including Holmes, including all the great thinkers. Act as if it already is taken, because it's the vibration you're putting into the law. Since ancient times, all spiritual masters of all traditions have pointed to the now as a key to fulfillment and happiness. It hasn't changed one iota. Truth is true. Nothing changes truth. From the very beginning of mankind, whenever that was, I don't even know anymore, there's so many different things written about it, but since the beginning, since we were able to have thoughts, it's always been the spiritual truth. We might not have been aware of the laws, the natural laws that were there, I mean, electricity was always there. Just because we didn't know how to use it doesn't mean it didn't exist. So there are countless, countless laws available to us. We just are not aware of them at this moment. But we believe in science of mind and new thought that there is a law that is a spiritual law that is responding to our every emotion and our every word, our every thought. So in Christian Gospels, it says things such as, nobody who puts his hands to the plow and looks back is fit for the kingdom of God. Pretty explicitly telling us not to live in the past. We can glance at the past, who doesn't? But to live in the past, I mean, it, it just, it, most of the time it feels painful. I'm sure you have wonderful things to live in the past about. But most of the time, as humans, we, we think about, our attention goes to like the worst possible um, experience we have. and brings it right into our now moment. Also says, this is the passage in Matthew, chapter 6, verse 25, where Jesus says, therefore I tell you, do not worry about tomorrow. What good is worrying about tomorrow, except that we create? more things to worry about tomorrow. Truly, keeping our focus, every time we catch our thoughts, we just catch them. We're kind, we want to be kind to ourselves. The world just beat us up pretty well and we beat ourselves up pretty well, all by, all, all by ourselves. So bring ourselves back, cultivate that being happy state of being, being at least at peace with what is. So not to worry about tomorrow, and most definitely, that most definitely can be interpreted as living in this now moment. Coming before Christianity, the whole essence of Zen Buddhism consists of walking deeply in the flow. 
in the now, the flow of the now. The flow isn't taking place in the past. It is not taking place in the future. The flow of life is taking place now, right now. No suffering, no suffering can be so completely present, no problem, nothing. That is not who we are. It's in our essence that we cannot turn to a place of peace, a place of knowing that the universe always supports us no matter what it looks like, no matter what the prognosis is, no matter what the situation looks like. There is a universal life force that supports us at all times. It's so reassuring and loving for ourselves to really know that. Now is also central in Sufi teachings. Rumi, who was a Sufi, wrote, past and future, veil of God from our sight, burn up both of them with fire. And Meister Eckhart, these are all really incredible sages. Meister Eckhart, the 13th century spiritual teacher, summed it up when he said, time <laughs> is what keeps the light from reaching us. There is no greater obstacle to God than time. Interesting. Since we teach in Ernest Holmes' teaching, there is no time in the divine. There is no time. There is a divine right order, but there is, God doesn't, isn't like a man or a woman that sits there with a watch on, going, <laughs> this one better get it straight. You know, it's not, right? It's divine right order. There's no time in God. Think of the wristwatch. God doesn't need one. It doesn't have a body. There's nowhere to put it. <laughs> I amuse myself. Okay. <laughs> and I love these words from Dr. Ernest Holmes. <laughs> and this is in the Science of Mind book, page 245. He wrote, We should erase the thoughts of yesterday that would rob us of today's happiness. And then he suggests saying this, there is nothing arising out of the past that can disturb me. I lose all things that in the past have caused anxiety. The spirit knows no past and is not affected by the belief in any. The past is swallowed up in the victory of a perfect present, which is filled with love and protection. And I love those statements from Dr. Ernest Holmes. So see, and he suggests saying them every day, so I think that you should repeat them after me. <coughs> so everybody, there is nothing arising out of the past. There is nothing arising out of the past. That can disturb me. That can disturb me. I lose all things. I lose all things. That in the past. That in the past. Have caused anxiety. Have caused anxiety. The spirit knows no past. The spirit knows no past. And it's not a by the belief in any way. And this is not affected by the belief in any way. The past is swallowed up. The past is swallowed up. In the victory of a perfect present. In the victory of a perfect present. Which is filled with love and protection. Which is filled with love and protection. And he wants us to do this again. Well, say the last line again. Yeah, that's good. Isn't that a good one? Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> the past is swallowed up. The past is swallowed up in the victory of a perfect present. In the victory of a perfect present. That is filled with love and protection. That is filled with love and protection. And then he goes on to write this. Equally, we must not have fear of the future. And he suggests that we say this. I see that the future is bright with promise. It beckons me forward into a more complete realization of my own worth and my rightful place in the universe. All my tomorrows are happy and filled with harmonious occupations. I look to the future with great and pleasurable anticipation, knowing it expands my opportunity for radiant self-expression. So we're going to say that. Yeah. All right. <laughs> I like that one. It is a matter. <laughs> I see that the future is bright with promise. I see that the future is bright with promise. It beckons me 
me forward. It me forward. Into a more complete realization. Into a more complete realization. Of my own worth. Of my own worth. And my rightful place. And my rightful place. In the universe. In the universe. All of my tomorrows are happy. All of my tomorrows are happy. And filled with harmonious occupations. And filled with harmonious occupations. I look to the future. I look to the future. With great and pleasurable anticipation. With great and pleasurable anticipation. Knowing it expands my opportunity. Knowing it expands my opportunity. For radiant self-expression. For radiant self-expression. Ah, and if you're looking for those, they're in the Science of Mind book, page 245. Yeah. <coughs> so we have, we have a little bit of a paradox that sometimes can hang people up. And I alluded to it before. It is the concept of creating a life of our dreams while living happily in the moment. And I love this concept of having, you might have seen this, it's been around for a while, the, the um, oh, what is it? I see it all the time on the charts. High anticipation and low attachment. I'm sure that you've seen it. Yeah. There's all kinds of ways of, of, there's all different ways of being, but that being the most effective and the most peaceful, really. So, this concept of having a high involvement in our dream and low attachment to it means that we are excited and passionate about our growth, expansion, and dreams. And we do that which we are guided to do. We do it that we, which we are guided mentally and physically <coughs> in this world to do. And then, this is the low attachment, we release it. We let it go. We release the future entirely and live it out in the here and the now. We live our lives in the here and the now. So we have these great dreams. We, we're full of them. So it, it, is, it is wonderful. It's a great, great, great place to be. But then we just let it be. It's kind of like a spiritual mind treatment. We release it knowing it's done. The same thing with our future. Instead of saying, Gee, I wonder if that's going to happen. Oh, God, but yeah, but what if this happens? And then that leads to the next thought, and the next thought, and the next thought. So we just have our great dreams, high anticipation, and then we let them be, because we're not attached to the outcome. Holmes had one more statement in Science of Mind on that page 246, one more page. I love my past and my future, and understand that they are but continuations of the one unbroken chain of life. There is no future to be afraid of, and no past to bring discord into the present. I love that. That's on 246. So if we, if we can release the grip, the grip of the past that just wants to hang on to us, it's because we can be right about it. We'd love to be right, but of course the miracle says that, are we happy? Yeah. When we have to be right, usually not, because we have such attachment to our being right. And then we have the past, which is the fear of anticipation of the future. That's where we go into worry. <clears throat> But we're free to choose in this now. It's the only place we can choose. I, I can't say it enough. In this now moment, we are free to choose. If you release the grip of the past, whether the past be 10 minutes ago, 10, 20, 30 years ago, no matter what, and release the fear of what will happen, what's going to happen tomorrow, because we don't know, really, what it will bring, or release the idea that tomorrow will be better, what kind of power then is there for us right in this now? All the power there is. It's the only place there is power in this moment. It's always now. That's why I love those clocks. Ken made one once yeah. for us. Yeah, he was going to sell them. Where it says now, 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 now. It's always now. <laughs> I was in someone's house and they had that awesome. clock up. So it was a now clock. Mm -hmm. You know, if you go online, you can see it. Or if you 
contact Ken and, you know, there he is. If you contact Ken, he might make you one. <coughs> the answer is, though, what kind of power is in the now is all the power there is because God is present in this moment. The present is my point of power, which is a great affirmation. The present is where I can express my power. I choose. I choose in the present. <coughs> So we all have the opportunity to express, embrace our life in one moment after another. There is nothing else, I can't say it enough, but this moment right here, right now. So experience it to the fullest. Have gratitude take you there if you can't get there. Gratitude for something will bring you into the present. It's a high vibration. Eric Butterworth once said, the only demonstration there is, ever was, or ever will be, is in and of divine law, and only time it knows it is now. So the law doesn't live in the past. Okay, we're talking about our, the law that we use. Holmes talks about all, he has a book, in fact, all is love and all is law. Love being the propelling force and law being the doer. Our subconscious is our personal law, okay? And then the great substance of the universe that connects us all is a law that we use. And that law doesn't exist in the past. It doesn't exist in the future. It does, but we're not using it in the past. Where can we only use? Where? Thank you. I don't want to keep saying it, but we all need to remind ourselves that. We really do. It's so vital. So do not pray to heal tomorrow. Pray for the consciousness of wholeness right here and right now to the best of your ability from a place of already recognizing the wholeness, knowing that you're whole, complete, and perfect. Just knowing it. Do not pray that tomorrow or the next day that you find a job, affirm that you are already in your perfect job and experience what it feels like. This is where we use that wonderful faculty of imagination that was drummed out of us so many years ago, not all of us, but most of us, when we were in school or by <clears throat> parents or what, whoever influenced you. What are you doing, daydreaming? Snap out of it. Why? <laughs> it's the greatest thing there is. Daydreaming, using our beautiful imagination. Do not pray to become <coughs> what you want to be. Know that you are already it. A perfect expression of the divine and behave like you are. Act as if. Do not pray for greater abundance. Feel yourself outrageously blessed or opulent. Cherie's favorite word. Opulence, which we love. It's the universal uh, truth. The universe is opulent and abundant right here, right now, and be grateful for it. Because it's that attitude again of gratitude that will propel us into a higher frequency that will attract, the law of attraction will attract to us that which we truly desire or something better. Our power of present moment awareness is experiencing the presence of the divine, our own being. As Barb read from, my, we had a great class uh, um, from the Untethered Soul, which she read from her reading. Don't close your heart. Open it to accept. Even if the, what the news you got or the feeling you're feeling does not feel good. <coughs> Open, embrace it. Just embrace it. Just embrace it. Easier said than done. But it truly leads us into a much better state of living this life while we are here. Because we only have now. We don't know what's going to happen in, in 10 minutes from now, from one minute from now. Nobody has any idea. No one. But if we live full out in the present moment, that's when we're living our truth. That's when we're living our truth. So I want to leave you with a short poem. And the author is anonymous. I couldn't find an author on it. And it's called, I Am. <coughs> so it goes like this. I was regretting the past 
fearing the future. Then suddenly, my Lord was speaking. My name is I Am. God paused. I waited. God continued. When you live in the past with its mistakes and regrets, it is hard. I am not there. My name is not I was. <laughs> when you live in the future with its problems and fears, it is hard. I am not there. My name is not I will be. When you live in the moment, it is not hard. I am here because my name is I am. And so I'm going to close this with a prayer. I accept the cleansing of my body. No, you don't have to say it. I, I'm saying it. You can say it if you want. Are you accepting the cleansing of your body? Okay, well, I am. <laughs> okay, <clears throat> done. So let's just join together in consciousness. Let's just know that the great I am, the presence of the infinite love of God is here in this moment, present, present, exuding its, its individuality, its light from each and every one in this room. Each one here is a being of astonishing light, of the glorious light, the perfect light of the divine nature. And that divinity is forever expressing itself into life. And it does so in its own perfection, which is beyond human understanding. It does so in its own perfect peace, which is beyond all human understanding. But it is present. We get a feeling of it, a tinge of it, when we are in prayer or meditation. We feel the presence of of peace itself. We feel the presence of divine love. It's in our hearts. The heart must be open in order to feel it. And to learn how to open the heart, we go into communion with the divine. We go into meditation. We go into contemplation. And we go into prayer. And so I am declaring right here and right now that each and every person in this room is part of, an integral part of the great I am. Each one is a perfect expression, creation of infinite mind, which is the genius creator of all that is. And I celebrate and give thanks for knowing this. I celebrate the greatness, the love, the givingness, the grace of God itself with all of its incredible expansiveness, with the beautiful nature of light that is showing up as each and every one here. I say thank you, life. Thank you, God. Thank you for giving us this precious gift and to become aware of it right here in this moment, right now. And I release this word into that intelligent, powerful law of divine mind where this word is made manifest in absolute perfection under divine right order for each and every person in this room, each one in our community, each one everywhere. The love of God rules. The love of God is all there is. And so it is. So it is. So it is. So it is.